of talked about one thing. I was talking to Teresa about it earlier. I think I'm going to go big or go home. So I've been thinking, what if we did a craft retreat slash convention? What does everybody think about that? So I'm going to post um, after the live. I'm going to post something that just kind of gives a tally of who'd be interested, who's a maybe, who's for sure, just so we know how many people to expect. What I was thinking, um, if we did a retreat and do like a Friday afternoon through maybe like a Sunday or a Monday, um, and um, we would find like vendors for like the cups, the glitter, the epoxy, all that stuff, and we could get a big kit um, and then just spend the weekend crafting and making tumblers. I think it sounds amazing, but I wanna see how many of you are interested to know how big of a space I would need and the pricing on it. So like I said, I'm gonna post that after the live just to get kind of a head count and a feel for who, who all would be interested in that. Um, what else? I think it'd be a lot of fun. I'm just excited about it. Okay, um, before I start, I don't know if any of you have watched, I have like 12 YouTube videos saved in my iPad that I've never posted. I posted two and What's Mimi? What? Sounds like fun if the timing's right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, I'm thinking like later this fall so that we give everybody a heads up. Um, okay, back to, if you've ever seen my YouTube video, I showed you my table. I just want to show you my table for a quick second, just so you know what I'm working with. Um, because it's going to kind of play into the, the stand that I'm going to make later on. Um, all of my PVC pipes that I use have the male connectors on the end. The reason why I do this is because if you look at my table, hold on, let me scooch it back. I don't have room in my office. If you look at my table, which let me turn you down. Sorry, it's shaky. I'm sorry. If you look at my table, I built this, by the way. Um, I also built my, my big black desk over here. That's two bookshelves and some two by fours. Yeah, I built that. Um, but I built this table because I'm kind of in a limited space in my office and I wanted to maximize it. But the reason why I have my mail piece is because down here in my bottom, I actually screwed holes or drilled holes into it and put the female connector so that when my things are drying, I just screw them in there and they're not going anywhere. Um, and that's gonna play a part in the stand that I make later. And I also have two of them right here. This one's missing. But this one I put in here so that when I'm working, my cup, let me find one, my cup, I can work and have both hands while my cup is there. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Um, I wish I would have made it about six inches wider because as you can see, I had to add on another piece because it wasn't long enough. Oops. Uh, Gracie, I'm outside of Dallas. I'm like east of Dallas. Okay, so first thing I wanna show you guys today is, look at this, how awesome is that? I am super proud of this. I took kind of the whole beach theme and I added it to the Nikki Marble method, which by the way, I am not Nikki in Nikki Marble. Um, I really love this, but what I wanted to show you with this, by the way, this is a sample cup. Um, we are going to come out with the mugs, the, the Magnolia mugs, um, some with handles, some without. We are working on getting them double wall vacuum sealed. So we don't have those yet. We're hoping by the holidays that we can have those, um, in time for you guys to make them all for, for presents for the holidays. So what I wanted to show you first and I don't know if anybody has ever done this, but I like to find random things and try them out. So if you've ever seen one of the beach tumblers that I made, I used a palm tree on it. And the way I did my palm tree is I used embossing powder. So embossing powder gives us the ability to use any stamp and create a cool design. So this cup right here, I know someone earlier said, oh, that's beautiful lace. This is actually not lace. It was a paisley stamp. 
So I used the stamp to roll it on there and then I used the embossing powder. So what I wanted to do with my beach tumbler was I wanted to add palm trees to it. So to use this, I'm gonna get a little bit, um, I found this on Amazon. I can't find, sorry, I think it's backwards to y'all. The big emboss it, I can't find the big one on like uh, in Hobby Lobby or anywhere. So I had to order this one off of Amazon. I don't want it too wet because then it's just a mess and then I have to clean it up. So what I did was just a little bit on there and I'm going to firmly push and try not to scoot it on my cup. Now, it's clear, you're not gonna see it. So then, let me grab a paper plate. And my paper plate, and I just use the Recollections Black and sprinkle it on. Now, what embossing powder is, is plastic, like tiny, tiny, tiny pieces of plastic. And how it works is it melts it when you add heat. So as you can see, it's a little bit messy, so I'm gonna blow on it. And I kind of have palm trees. Now, the top of my palm tree is kind of missing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this first before I go back, because if I touch this right now, this is super wet and it's just gonna come off. But I don't want to apply heat until I get off all this little excess baby powder that didn't blow off. So I have a little bristle brush and I'm just, don't touch where you want it because it'll smear. I'm just gonna brush off the excess which this one kind of works out because I have the the navy sparkle in there so it kind of all blends together like that looks like embossing powder but it's not it's not coming off so then what I'm gonna do is put it back on now right now it looks like a powder but when I melt it it's gonna look wet and it will be wet for just a quick second so I'm gonna tilt you downwards and you might wanna turn your volume down because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my um, heat gun and it's gonna be loud. But I want you to see, hopefully, the difference in the look when you know it's melted. So I'm trying to make sure you guys can see it. I don't know if you'll be able to or not. But I'm sure gonna try. Okay. So my heat gun, again, just bought it on Amazon. This little doodad, I think it was maybe 14 bucks. Okay, turn down your volumes, it's gonna get loud. I'm gonna let it heat up, make it nice and hot. And then when I apply it, hopefully you guys can see, it's gonna turn from like this powdered look to a wet. And now remember, you have epoxy on there, so you don't want to stay in one place too long because of the epoxy. Okay, so hopefully you can see it kind of has like that glossy wet look now. I'm going to give it just a second, and then I'm going to fix that missing palm tree. Because once it's dry, it's not coming off. How do you hold your cups on the pipe? Um, these cups, I actually, okay, so I don't use these pipes um, when I'm holding my cup. I use my, let me, sorry, back you away. Turn you back up. Sorry, it's a juggling act. So when I'm working with my cups, I use my pipe, which it has the male connector. I don't ever use it on here. It helps me because I'm very impatient and I like to touch it when it's wet and before. So I always make sure that I put it on here because I have to touch it in order to put it on here and then that way I know it's dry. So when I'm messing with my cups, I use my male connector um, and then when I'm ready to epoxy or anything, I just slide it on there and I have a bucket of these laying around. Your kid was crying in the crib. Yeah, my husband took my kids. 
Okay, so as you can see, it's still warm, but it's dry. It's not going anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match it up and re figure out which leaf was missing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to paint on in just that little spot the part of the, the palm tree leaf that I was missing. So I'm going to dry all this off so that I don't get anything else on there. And it's the third and fourth leaf. So this, wait, nope, this one, the third and fourth leaf, just get it a little wet, and then line it up. Oh, I smeared it. Okay, so if you smear it, here's the good news, you wipe it off. It's not stuck forever. Now it is kind of oily. Okay, and then let me do it again. Paper plate. And so now I have that extra leaf on there. And now if like, I see like a little spot that's missing, I can just go in there and paint it on. And there we go. Now I have all my palm tree leaves and I'm gonna go heat that up. And again, remember, don't put it on there too long. Cause you don't wanna overdo what you've already put on. So I'm going to let it get nice and hot. Okay, sorry, I'm not catching up on, on comments. What do you use inside your cups? My cups, I use everything from footballs to pool noodles. Um, give me one second and I'll show you. I'm going to move that for I spray it everywhere. Alright, and we have palm trees. So from here, I can add my epoxy, my vinyl, whatever I want to do with it. It is good to go. So, sky is the limit. Move your plate. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is a little plate. Move my plate. Um, so, pool noodles. Let me show you pool noodles. I found some really awesome ones at Walmart that they have right now. And I have three sizes. I keep these stacked up. Okay, so I have the, the normal pool noodle. I have, this is the cool new one that they have at Walmart right now. They have like all kinds of fun shapes, but this one is extra big. So it fits in like all those big cups. And this is like the bigger pool noodle. And then if I ever, let me find it. If I ever need something in between the sizes, I just use my shelf liner. And as you can see, I have a giant bucket of noodles. Um, there's one with shelf liner, and I, I don't know why I had that gauze. I think it came with my uh, cup of source. So, that's what I'm using on my noodles. Okay, Alright, so that one's done. What I want to do next is kind of like the paisley one I just showed you guys earlier. I want to do mermaid scales. So, I found this stamp. Alright, let me throw this away. I found a stamp that is mermaid scales mermaid scales what is that white pad you use the white pad i used is an it's a big embossing ink pad um i couldn't find this big of one in hobby lobby or michael's so i had to order it on amazon everyone run and grab their packed up wrapping wrapping supplies and pop and pop. Um, so I'm going to use this to create the mermaid scales. Like I know a lot of people do peekaboo, a lot of people, um, sorry, do vinyl. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, um, to create, this is one of the 30 ounce pumps. It's a sample. They are, don't, don't be mad. They're delayed. Um, I had to fix a few things on them with the lid. It wasn't the way I wanted it. So they're taking a couple days extra on the production. They didn't make it on my May 30th boat. 
but I'm praying they get on my next boat. If not, I might have to airship some of them in um, just because they're running so behind. So, what I'm going to do, same thing as before, I'm going to ink it and then roll it on there, right, like that, and then sprinkle my powder just to give you guys an idea of some of the embossing ideas. I was playing around with these cups. Don't judge, they're not the greatest. Um, this one I never melted, right? There was, I was playing with it. I always have play cups. Um, and then this one, same thing, I was playing with it. I can't figure out how to do the embossing right on the corner. It's not, not working for me. Do you epoxy again after embossing powder? Yes, make sure you, um, uh, I put a leather layer of epoxy on there, which this one, um, I only had one layer when I did the marble. So it only has one layer of epoxy right now. So I could do, totally do the vinyl and the, the embossing all in one. So here was a rose pattern that I never finished. Okay. And you can see, I kind of messed it up right there. Luckily, like I said, it's powder. If you mess up, you wipe it off and you start over. That's the joy of it. Okay, so let me start on this one real quick. And if you weren't here before, love the cup in your hand. Oh, sorry, I'm delayed, so I don't know which one. Like I told you guys before, so the joys to my table, let me find a stick, is that I have this little doodad. I have one of the female connectors. Um, put into the side of my table. So now that I have both hands to work with. Hey Jennifer, tonight I am, I'm doing several different things. Right now I am doing, how do you seal the powder? So you seal the powder by melting it. The, the, so embossing powder is just small, tiny particles of plastic. So when you use your heat gun on it, it's melting the plastic. Okay, so here's what I'm doing, one more time. I'm gonna get a little bit of this on there, not a lot. Don't wanna overdo it, but make sure it's all covered. Okay, and I'm gonna line it up at the bottom. Press firm, but try not to slip. Okay, it rolls on clear, not gonna see it until you're done. Grab my paper plate. Now, this is embossing powder that I found at Hobby Lobby. This one has like a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see, it has a sparkle to it. So that's why I love it for the mermaid. Oh, and see, I messed up just a little bit. I double pressed it. Okay. Here's where I'm going to take it off. What if you heat the embossing powder? How do you take off the, you don't take off the embossing. So that's why you have to make sure it's the way you want it before you start. So there are my mermaid scales. Now over here, I don't know if it's just cause I didn't put enough ink or if I um, didn't press hard enough, but I don't like it. So I'm going to swipe it. And now I have a nice clean line so put it back on here. You don't want to do another stamp until this is done because if you touch it, it's going to smear it as you just saw. So heat up my gun. I put it on high. Heat up the gun. Embossing powder on tumbler. Yes, isn't that awesome? The, the possibilities are endless. Okay, so you'll see it turns to like a glossy liquid. down for a second because remember it's hot it's metal it is hot 
And just to give you guys a closer look, there it is. It's on there. Okay, so this is why having a perfectly straight tumbler makes life so much easier. The 30 ounce plump that we're coming up with, the top is the same as the bottom. So what that means for you is you're not having any taper. Could you use eyeshadows? Um, I'm not sure. Like, it, like I said, these are plastic, like little particles of plastic. That's all these are. So they would have to something that would melt. I haven't tried eyeshadow though. Do I sand before embossing? I don't know. So this was, um, I actually used the epoxy method to create my ombre, which by the way, totally love this stuff. This is from Southern Bees and Bling. So the top one is Fairy Godmother. It's an extra fine, so it goes on like powder. It is awesome, I love her powders. And then the bottom from her was Rainstorm Blues. It's like a black, but it has blue, green, and purple inside of it. And so I love the way that it ombre. And again, that's from Southern Bees and Bling. What is the stamp? Um, I think I is Micah. Yes. Yes. Have you used eyeshadows? No. I haven't used eyeshadow, but I have done the Micahs. That's how I did. Oh, hold on one second. My thing got pushed way down in there. This is why I need a bigger. I think I'm just going to have to put another. So I'm going to screw that on my table. And now the hard part, I have to line my edges up. So I'm actually going to go with that side because that was the side that ended on the stamp. So find my stamp, remember not too much, just enough to make it wet. And this stuff is kind of oily, like the residue is very, very oily. sure I got it all okay so now the hard part is lining it up uh, and see I scraped it but that's why it's awesome it wipes right off and then you start all over Did you see that? Did you just see that? Oh, I had it. I had it. I was so close. My hands are getting slippery. My stamp has the embossing. Sorry, where did you find the stamp? Uh, this one is... I think this one was Hobby Lobby. I know these plumps, they're so awesome. I, I was just mentioned before, I, I might have to do an air order because the production is kind of delayed. Okay, wish me luck, third chimes, the charm. Okay, got it, okay. Put my thing under there, say a prayer. Now, it's really important to try to get as much excess as you can. How did you come up with this idea? I don't know. I've never used embossing powder in my life, to be honest. I go to, to be honest, I go to Hobby Lobby and I just, and Michael's and I just walk the aisles and I'm like, ooh, could I use that? Okay. I'm gonna brush off just a little bit of the excess. I think part of it was that I had some of the oil still on there. 
Now, what would be really cool with this, though, is if, if you were doing, like, a distressed look. I'm going to wipe off this little piece right here. It's too much. Is if you were doing a distressed look and you just kind of blotted it. Right? Okay. I'm going to heat this one up. Okay, I'll try to check my comments as I'm doing this. Oh, yeah. I never thought about pulling it off. do my last this will be the hard one because I'm gonna have to line up two sides yeah embossing powder is usually for paper but we found new ways to use it so if you guys are just tuning in this one right here sorry if you can see that I embossed you can kind of see the lines every now and then but that's kind of why I added the chunky glitter to it is to help hide some of the imperfections I used the paisley stamp for that yeah girls go pull out your stamps okay did i press it i don't remember all right get it wet enough and now the hard part is going to be lining this thing up okay let's see I'm almost to the end Trying to figure out, okay, so the top one, I might have to double up. Sorry, I can't see my glasses on. You know what? Oh, see, I slid again. I'm running out of things. No. My dog wants to be part of the action tonight. Okay. I don't think this is going to line up right, but we're going to try. Alright, let's see how that turned out. No idea. Uh, did I add powder to the container or is it ink? No, this is just powder. It's embossing powder. So I need to touch up that little piece. I don't know if you can see. I need to touch that up. So what I'm going to do, do I want to swipe it or no? I think I'm just going to put the stamp back to it. I'm going to swipe it. I didn't like it. But the rest of it's not half bad. So I'm going to fix that little piece after I melt this one. So I'm putting the stamp into embossing ink. I bought this on Amazon because I can't find the big ones at Hobby Lobby or anywhere. And then I use, sorry, there's a glare. There's a horrible glare. Embossing powder. Make sure it's hot. It is. And remember, you're putting this against epoxy. So you don't want to melt the epoxy. Don't stay in one place too long.
and you'll know when it's done because it you'll see it it turns to almost like liquid let me see if I can find let me grab where'd that cup go this one I want to see if you can see the difference see how like mm, will it focus that one's like a powder that one is like a it's hard to describe you'll see the, the difference in the consistency I don't think my camera is focusing okay and then I'm gonna go back and fix that but for the sake of time I'm gonna move on to the next project I'm gonna set this up I gotta fix the, the thing inside of it so I'll go back and fix that before the final layer of epoxy he just used stamp pads I've never, yeah, I've never used embossing until I played around with this, so I don't know what you can mix and match. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, real quick, I wanted to show you. Guess what I've got coming? So when I made my beach tumbler, all the leftover epoxy, I made a coaster. So we're getting a container on Thursday morning, and I don't... We have two of them coming back to back, so I'm not sure which one's on what, but I am getting silicone molds. So there'll be a set of coasters, which I don't have the other one here. It's the circle. So you'll have the hexagon, the square, and the circle. It'll be a three pack. Um, I believe it's $7.99. And I should have those, like I said, Thursday morning. <clears throat> as soon as I unload the container, I'll get them posted. <clears throat> um, and I'm also going to have the mermaid tails, the, the large one and the medium one. And I think a two pack of those, uh, one of each, will be $5.99, I believe. And I'm also getting glitter shakers. So they're going to be, I don't have any of them here. They're going to be, um, I think they're kind of similar to the recollections um, where they're gonna have like the the pour spout, but they also have the sprinkle side and they should hold a two ounce weighted bag of glitter My dog is glitterized y'all like she's in here glittery. Go. Go. Bye. Bye. Out. You're glittered. You're out. Okay So just so you know those are coming and should be here Thursday and I think I am pretty sure I'm getting more straws in. I know we've sold out and I ordered more for this one. Um, since I know you guys love them. Yeah, glitter, <laughs> Teresa. Yeah, Teresa started packaging glitter. <laughs> we had a conversation about this. Like my floor, my face, I'm covered in glitter and I don't even sell glitter. I can't imagine all of y'all that package it. I just can't imagine. Okay, um, I'm gonna play around with something. I'm, I've never done it before. It's gonna be a learning process. We're gonna see if we love it or hate it. You can be my judge. So I found these really cool um, where did I find these? Hobby Lobby? Let me see. There's a bunch of different ones. Let me grab them. Here. If you want to just see my whole setup. My other dog's in here. So, where do I got it? So, here's all my bins. So, I found, these are a few things I started using. I found these. They're like an acrylic paint. But they've got like an iridescent effect to them. So when I do like my white, instead of using a mica, sorry, it's not, it's so blurry. Like spotlights in here. It's these things. I think I found these at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I can't remember. But it's like a good acrylic paint. I've been using those. I've got my micas. I've got my, um, my dye. And then I have these things that I found. They're metallic lusters, I don't know. So this one is champagne, white, black. And what they are is they're like a pasty um, paint, I guess. And they're all different colors and I don't know. So we're gonna play around with them. And I also found, these are called, um, let me find some good ones. This color was cool. 
I might use it later. These things were in their patina effect paste. They're kind of the same, same thing. They're a little more watery though. But I'm gonna play around with these and I wanna see if I can make something cool out of them. So, like I said, y'all, I just go and I find random things and I'm like, that looks cool. Let's see if it works, right? You love that paint? Okay, on the first coat of epoxy, how long does it need to turn? I let mine turn either overnight or all day. So like I do them first thing in the morning or the palm tree cup you had on your rack. Which rack? I'm confused. I don't know. Galaxy tumblers and they were fun to work with. Okay, well, since y'all love them, let's see what we can do on this. So I Pinterest what goes with rose gold and they gave me like gray and like some blue. So this was like a gray blue. Um, what color was this? This was gunmetal from Yaya. Or Sass and Craft. Same thing, right? Okay, let's find a brush. I want something bristly. So, kind of bristly, right? Let's see what we can make of it. I'm going for like a distressed... Okay, so all of y'all that have done this before, the first one I did, oh, that one, that was my um, beach marble, isn't that awesome? That's like my new favorite cup, I might go make a hundred of them. Navy blue is perfect, oh, I don't have a navy blue paint though, I do have a navy blue glitter, I might have to use that next time. Okay, so, I think I'm going to kind of blotch it, because I want to try that, um, I don't have a navy blue. I have a turquoise blue. This might turn out like horrible. We don't know. That's why I said, come play with me. I play around. And then I give them away as gifts. Which one of my lucky family members watching tonight is going to get this cup? The world may never know. I was going to go blotchy, but I wasn't digging it. So I might just use this to get the background to sparkle through. And then from here, maybe, oh, my epoxy wasn't there. Oh, can we talk epoxy for a second? So I have been an avid Pro Marine user since day one. I love it in the Texas heat because um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I left my cup in my car and it melted. Well, in Texas, you can run inside for 30 seconds and come back out and your car is like 500 degrees. So I always heard Pro Marine was amazing for that. And seeing how most of my customers were here in Texas, I needed to make sure that they didn't melt. So I've used Pro Marine forever and I didn't realize how much I hated it until I switched. So I just bought the um, Faux Rizzle when it was on sale for Memorial Day. And I gotta tell y'all, it is amazing. Okay, amazing. And I talked to somebody at Faux Rizzle and I was like, hey, listen, I love your product. Totally gonna be your fangirl from here on out. Um, I'm trying to possibly become a distributor. Love it so much. But they're going to be one of our sponsors for the retreat. Yes, for Rizzle, you love it too? I love it. So let's talk real quick because I know I had a lot of people join probably since I started. We want to put together a retreat, like a convention retreat, getaway, girls weekend, four days somewhere. Um, I'm looking at conference centers if we have enough people, right? I can find little houses if only a few of you can make it. Man, this stuff dries fast. Um, So... If you guys are interested, I'm going to put a poll out there to see how many people are truly going to make it so that I know how big of a place that I need to get. Um, and I've already had Faux Rizzle. They're going to donate some epoxy for us to use. Um, and like I said, if I become a distributor, maybe I can get some more in there. 
and I'm hoping to get some glitter suppliers. I know I've talked to Teresa about it, um, and I think it would just it would be so much fun. Obviously, I'm going to donate the cups. So in the cost of going, you would get the cups, the glitter, the epoxy, pretty much everything you would need is going to come in like a little kit for you. And we just spend the weekend like learning new things. And if anybody's interested in like teaching something, I'm totally down for that. Um, I would love for people to come in and show us what you got. Um, and that way we can all spend the weekend learning, having fun, doing girl things, right? So I'm going to post that and see how many of you, um, like what's your level of interest so that I can judge how big of a place that we need to find. All right, this stuff dries really fast. All right, let me answer some questions. Um, retreat sounds awesome. Yes, I can help you with the retreat. Yes, Teresa, we talked. Uh, Sharon, what are, so I'm gonna, I live in Dallas, well, I live east of Dallas, so I'm gonna have it in Dallas. I'm trying to find a place that has like a big conference room right around the airport. Um, that way, if any of you had to fly in, we could either like find a shuttle or maybe even it's close enough they have a free shuttle to the hotel and I think I might have to find if I think it'd be later in the fall so I don't think we would be pool weather um okay guys question do I use another bristled brush or do I try dabbing with a ink pad yeah long weekend Irving has a new spot Irving what uh Maureen what what spot in Irving I found a place in Lake Louisville, but it only held 15 people. So, I don't think 15 is enough. <laughs> Alright, what am I doing, y'all? I need, I need, who wants to do what? Do I do another bristled brush? Do I dab? What's, what do I do? I think I'm going to use, where'd it go? That blue, the, the blue patina. Because I've never used it before. Or do I keep going with the same brand that or that it's a little creamier a new convention center does the Maureen does the new convention center like have rooms like my biggest thing is is I want like you can just walk to your room when you're done or if you're here in Texas you could drive home and commute totally fine too wish I was home in Anderson depending on what month Angie, I'm thinking let's wait till kids start school, let things die down, but still before the holidays. The first blue. So you think this, so, so first person to answer, that blue and bristle, so bristle brush it. Yeah, I think I need to stick with the same consistency. Let's find one though. What is that you're using? I'm using, I don't know what it is, to be honest. It's like a, oh, it's our wax metallic finish. It came in like a cardboard package at, I want to say Hobby Lobby. Okay. I'm just playing around. I really have, this one I'm going to like mix up in there. I'm not, I'm not going to go hardcore with it. No, nah, I went hardcore. Not bad. The problem I struggle with is the edges, making them look natural. Oh y'all, you let me forget the bottom. You had me talking about retreats, and now I forgot the bottom. Let me finish the bottom real quick.
Yeah, it's rust. It, it's actually a rose gold, but it, it does. I think with the gray behind it, I used gunmetal from Yaya. Um, I think with the gray behind the rose gold, it did turn out kind of a, kind of of a coppery. I did it again. I went crazy. Yeah, too much, too much, too much. Why not? It dries really fast. Really, really fast. So I'm gonna take my copper and go back. You like it? How did I do? Like I said, it was a learning curve. We've never done this before. I do like that I can kind of see, I don't see so much the color of the, the glitter underneath, but I do see the sparkle of it. So that's fun. So I got a confession to make y'all. I am horrible at crackle, like horrible. I cannot for the life of me get crackle to work. It is it is not my friend. Sorry, I'm pulling it off so maybe you guys can see a little better. So yeah, you can see in there, you can see the sparkle coming through. But it did give it like a distressed look. There's a big chunk of coral, or sorry, coral, glitter. Huh. What do you think? I like it. You can see the glitter. Because when I use the really bristly brush, sorry, I'm trying to get it to focus. It doesn't like to focus when I zoom in. Here, focus, focus. You can see the glitter that comes through. Okay, cool. I dig it, I dig it, y'all. Thanks for helping. I dig it. It does need an old country truck. Okay, so before I get too ahead of myself, we need to talk about the real fun thing that's gonna happen. You saw my pictures and I'm super excited. Um, hold on, I made a list to make sure I covered everything. Mermaid, yep, yep, yep. Okay. You ready for the fun stuff, y'all? Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. <laughs> it's pretty much dry, but let's just put it down here. What is the paint called? So the paint is a wax metallic finish. It comes in this little doodad. It's in a um, like cardboard packaging. By the way, double check it. So I bought like every single one that they had. You know me, cause I buy them all never using them before or if I ever like them. So I bought all of them, and when I got home, it said that it was like silver, but when I opened it up, it was the exact same color as white. And the somehow it had been packaged wrong. So double check um, before you, Hobby Lobby tried to give, yeah, it was Hobby Lobby, tried to give me grief, and they were like, thought I was returning the wrong one. Um, no, they gave it to me that way. Okay, let's talk about moving this. And what I'm gonna do next. So, you wanna see something cool? Here, let me take this off. I'll show you something cool. Have y'all tried sublimation? So, sublimation, let me get it off, is this, right? It's not vinyl, it's printed. So, I went and researched a bunch of sublimation and found out that you can buy this Epson printer. It's an Epson printer. Um, it's called a Workforce 7210, and it was, I want to say it was on Amazon, maybe 200 bucks or less, and then you have to buy, excuse the mess, y'all, it is, it is a mess, 
Then you have to buy, here it is, you have to buy this little doodad that, well, which way do I go? That connects, right? So this is the ink tank. You have to buy special sublimation ink. And then you have to buy this because the normal cartridges look like this, right? And you buy this attachment, right? And it feeds your ink in there from here. So what this does, and you have to print on special paper. It's sublimation paper. Let me see if I can find my box. Again, Amazon. Okay, sublimation paper. This is the one I use. Um, you don't need that whole, I mean, you can. More power to you. But I'm all about the cheap version. This is sublimation paper. And what it does is, let me bring it back over here. I actually have, oh, why did it show up? I think. Why did my thing turn off? Hold on, one second. Double checking. Too much stuff in here. It turned off earlier too. Yep, the little power button. Getting bumped. So now that has to heat up. It was heating up. Um, give me five seconds. I'm gonna go wash my hands. Actually, I got at the time. Let me just which, can we talk about acetone real quick? Do y'all have these from Dollar Tree? The little pumps? Seriously, a dollar? I have ten of them. Some of them with alcohol. Some of them with acetone. They are my lifesaver. Did I lose my... Yeah, that pump is a lifesaver. When you're in a pickle, you just pump it real quick. Okay. And hence the reason why I can't have fake nails. Hold on, the dog wants out. My dog covered in glitter. Actually in box. Oh my gosh, I got it everywhere today. Okay. So, sublimation paper. I bought on Etsy digital files, or sorry, digital paper is what you need to search. Digital paper, yes, I will link my printer, the, the doohickey that it makes it work, and the ink. Um, so this is sublimation. It looks super, super dull. I know the, this is, not it's brighter than this like this looks really 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 dull um don't freak out because once you print it it's going to be really really bright so let's talk about what sublimation is sublimation is a special type of ink that when it's heated it turns into a gas state the gas is absorbed by polyester so like this shirt for instance i think is like 97 percent polyester you have to have a minimum of 50%. Now, 50% is not great. It doesn't hold, to me, it washes right out. So I try to find things with like 90% or more. Sorry, I'm moving the trash can. 90% or more. Now, I did buy, and I have yet to use it, so I can't um, give you any feedback on it. But I did buy, what is this from? Dye Press. It's this spray, so you got it from diepress.com. It's this spray that you can put on um, cotton and it will make it work and make it like a polyester absorbing material. So I haven't tried it yet. It's not in my free time. Um, but what you can do is you take your sublimation and you press it onto polyester. Well, what also works is Glitter HTV. Hold on, my fan is blowing. Hold on one second. Okay, Glitter HTV. So you can press this piece of paper to the glittered side of HTV, right? And you come out with one of these, okay? And what I do with this is I turn it into these, okay? So this right here is a full sheet um, just like this one and I wrapped it all the way around 
And I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to press one for you. Okay, I wrap it all the way around. And then I did, because it has a gap at the bottom, that's where I added the glitter. Okay, and then this one, it was a little half sheet, um, just like these ones. So I did a galaxy, and I'm going to do my sister um, an army one. So then I did a little half sheet, wrapped it around here, and I think I actually like the 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 ombre at the top or the glitter ombre whatever you call it at the top and the bottom okay and I was able to sprinkle it in now this one it didn't wrap all the way around you can see I had to stretch it pretty good and there's like a little baby line there but that's where you can, I don't know not really noticeable right okay. so this is what we're gonna make next and I'm gonna show you how to make it so when you're doing sublimation, I, I read everywhere that you're supposed to do 400 degrees. I did 400 degrees and it like burnt my shirts. Like if it was a white shirt, um, sublimation sheets, pre-printed patterns, no, I'm, I don't plan on it. Um, I know a bunch of people that might be interested. Um, I feel like my printer is probably not up to high capacity. Um, I think it's just more of a home crafter kind of thing. Um, so sublimation, I gotta wait. So when I did 400 degrees, it, it like turned my shirts yellow. It's like almost like it burned it. So I knocked it down to 385 and that has been working like a charm. I hold it for about a minute. Um, while this is heating up, I'm going to show you though how, let's do this one. It's a little more difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this. I know sublimation mugs, the ones that are already white, and then that way you don't have to use glitter. Trust me, I know. My, my supplier does have them. I just have to stock them. Basically, it's just a special type of paint that they spray it with, so I could do it on all of our styles. But I'm just, I'm not, if, if I have like a good chunk of you that do sublimation and are loving it, I might consider it. Um, but my my experience so far is that it's not super popular yet. Um, if it's a shirt for you, wash it first to get the sizing out. Yeah, that's what I've heard before. Um, but what I've used is, as long as it's higher in polyester, then it works pretty well. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm going to cut it down. It's easier to cut the paper than it is the HTV and I can use my cutter and make straight lines which is a world of difference I've had this cutter I think since 1992 I'm not even sure it cuts straight lines anymore sorry I'm not looking at um, let me ask where you got those red shelves on the pegboard. Red, uh, these, these shelves, is that what you're asking, Donna? These shelves are from Ikea. They're spice racks and I painted them. They are perfect for my acrylic paints. Um, see, that one is not straight. Let me go again. Like I said, this is from 1992, pretty sure. Actually, that's a lie. In 1992, I was three years old. But I have never changed the blade on it, which might be part of the reason why it's so awful. I'm pretty sure that's not straight. I'll make it work. Okay, 
So I've got my pieces cut with no white extra. It makes it super easy. Okay, and now what I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna stay over here. Sorry, moving you all over the place. Let me get you where you can see me. So now what I'm going to do is tilt you downward. Sorry for the jiggles. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I don't know if they're still on sale. I was in a, in a bind. So normally I get my vinyl from specialtygraphics.com. It's just where I've always gotten it since the day I started. I know there's a million out there. Um, but I didn't, I ordered too late. I didn't realize I was out. So I went to Michael's. Normally these scissor um, HTV rolls are $25 each. They had them on sale. If you bought five of them, they were $10 each. I don't know if that sale is still going on. So I bought five of them. So now what I do is I'm going to line this up and I draw on it so that I can cut it perfectly. Line my corners up. Because like I said, I don't want any excess white. It's, it's a lot harder to get the white off after. Okay. So I'm going to cut this one. And just for the sake of time, I'm only going to do one of these. I want to do the galaxy. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's the one I cut. Okay. So, my heat press is done. Now, I have to label these, my corners of all my sheets, because, let's see. As you can see, that one has, like, stuff all over it. It's the residue from my HTV. So, actually, here's what's weird, though. It's not the one it's pressed to. It's the one beneath it. So this one goes on top, and what I do is I peel away my glitter from the carrier sheet. All right, lay it down, and line up, All right, okay, lined up, ready to go. All right, are you ready for awesomeness? Oh man, the Joann's has them for eight. Wow. Okay, one minute. It's gonna sit for one minute. Um, I feel like the longer it sits, the more vibrant it is. Not too long though, because then it's just melted. seconds what temp do you have it on I have mine at 385 400 was too hot I don't know if it's just my press or I don't know I do 385 three two one Okay, now it's hot, very hot. Look at that galaxy. I told you, it looks dull, it is not dull. Okay, then I'm gonna let, see look, this is why that sheet has glue on it. It's down underneath there. So, don't peel this off right away, or you will do like I do, and stick it to itself, and then it's no good. So I'm gonna let it dry. warm still and I haven't tried them yet just so you guys know I found on Amazon supposedly these are polyester hats which means it should hold um, each, uh, the, the sublimation but I did find at Kohl's 
these were in like the the women's sports section like where you find the headbands and stuff it is I don't TC TG brand they were two dollars and twenty cents on clearance at Kohl's so if you can go find these go snatch them up because they're polyester and they hold so fun fact of the day all right it is cooled off so now I'm just going to peel it so now you have it there is my glitter now straight flat surfaces are the easiest things to work on however if you are a master at these I think you could get it to do other things I have tried these on the slims they do have a bit of a taper to them so make sure they're a little longer than you need hold on my sister is calling me she's in South Korea by the way with her husband um she was the one I was making the army one for so they have a little tape around them so if you're going to wrap them make sure it's a little taller a little longer just so when you wrap it and it doesn't meet perfectly that you're able to get it on there right so what I'm doing though is I'm playing around with our new tumbler this will be our new kids cup I think I showed you guys this before it's also going to double as the travel mug but because I'm using sublimation and I'm wrapping it I'm going to um, use this one because it makes it just easier so this I designed it for y'all because I wanted to maximize the space up top that we could decorate the kids cups now let me see look at the difference in size that you can to decorate you got almost a whole nother inch I think about and this one will hold 16 like I said it's a little bigger um, it's not 14 but it's perfectly straight more room to decorate and if it's too big for your kid you just don't fill it up all the way right okay that's what everyone told me and the bottom doesn't have the line on it right this one it, the bottom's flat but it has that line there ours has the capped bottom um, so if you wanted to decorate and again this is perfectly straight too so the reason why I like this is because when I wrap this which I made this shorter it did fit right it did fit um, I made it shorter though because like I showed you guys before I like it when it, uh, it has the a little bit of the um, glitter at, t at the top so the joys of a straight tumbler is it lines up perfectly okay so I'm gonna turn this into basically this right it had the glitter at the top and at the bottom so let me hook you back up I have slid everything everywhere and I'm gonna show you how I apply it screw that onto my table um, if you didn't see my table go back to the beginning um, I am gonna post this video so you guys can go back and watch it oh hold on, let me turn my phone Okay. Oh, ooh, of glove. If you have an of glove, use it. Do not buy these things. These are so big and bulky. It is impossible to work with, but it's all I got. So it's it's HTB. HTB has to be heated in order to get the glue to stick, right? So we're going to use the heat gun make sure I line it up and I do have extra on there I'm gonna cut that away once I get it wrapped around sometimes it stretches sometimes it shrinks right um, I'm gonna lay my ink and paper and use printed glittered vinyl yeah you could use any really you get if you have um, regular vinyl if you have glittered vinyl that's printed like yeah totally I was just showing everybody sublimation because sublimation you can use it on shirts hats um, anything polyester really okay so what I'm going to do is I've got it where I want it sorry I think it's loud I just don't want to move it I moved it make sure it's straight on there make sure it's hot Ooh, it's hot 
Could you use a mini iron? Um, I'm not sure. I have a attachment for my uh, one heat press that does cups. I've just never tried it. Um, so I'm going to heat this up just a little bit and then push it down and get it to stick. Because now. I want to push it and get it to stick just so I can make sure I have it wine. Ooh, hot. See? That's why I need gloves. These ones I just can't work very well with, so I save them until I absolutely need them. Yeah, see? I don't have it on there straight. Okay? So, good thing is, it comes right off. I had it straight and then took it off. Okay. What you can also use, and I might do it if I can find where I put it. Give me one second is the high temp tape. I'm going to use a little bit of that to secure it in place. And I'm actually going to tape it in the back here because once I have this um, done, yeah, totally burn yourself. Yeah, these are metal cups. I have burnt myself I don't know how many times. That's why you got to use those gloves. I'm, I need to order some. The hardest part is the is the the ends because the middle of it is no problem. Ooh, hot. Okay, take that off. I just needed it for a second. Don't stay in one place too long. You just want enough to get it to adhere, and then we'll go around and, and finish it and get it good. Now, you can stretch these a little if you need it to. turn it off just for a second. Whew. Yeah, I burn myself all the time. Now, there's my cut line. Because it's laying so nicely, I don't think I'm going to trim off the extra. And I'm just going to overlap it. If you are really talented and you know the measurements, which I'm sure I could find, um, you could have this line up perfectly where like say this one and this one, stretch your image and so that it meets perfectly and you wouldn't even see the line. But I don't mind it. It's, it, it doesn't keep me up at night. Yeah, a mug press. I have one. I just, I'm so worried about it like slipping or, I don't know. I do it, I, you know, let's make things difficult for me. Okay, now I'm going to go back around and I'm going to make sure, because I don't want epoxy to get underneath the edges, so I'm going to make sure the edges are good and sealed. Thought 
see these gloves? I can't move my hands. They're not good. They're great at pushing, I guess. I know my mom had like those of gloves where it's just like a winter glove. You just move your hand as good as you, as you want. Back to the beginning. I think I've got it all pushed down. Very, very, very hot. Hot. All right. Let's see. Uh, mug press. Sub on Clear HTV. Oh, I never seen Clear HTV. Allison, I might need to look into that. I have one with five attachments. Yeah, Maureen, I have the five attachments too. I have the the hat, the mug, and then the two little plates, and then like a normal circle plate, and then the normal t-shirt press. All right, there you have it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use Flamingo from Yaya's Sass and Craft, and Chunky Coral from Glitter Glams. Is it Glitter Glams? Okay, those are the two I'm going to use. What I need to do is I need to prime it. So what I do is I get my tape and I'm going to tape off. Now remember, you're going to put this over the HTV a little bit. So I leave the smallest amount showing because, I mean, I'm covering it with glitter anyway. You're not, the whole point is to not see that edge. So I'm not super concerned with it. I just know the the spray. See, this is what this is for. I don't want it to get all over. Alright. So I'm going to Should I use white to make it bright or should I use coral? I can't decide. Serenity Creations in Roy City has clear HD. I've heard of her. I might need to try her out. Yeah, the hair ones. Yeah. Okay, so white or coral. I don't, I have the coral out in my garage, so I think. Let's do coral. Why not? All right, you ready to come with me? Let's go do coral. White? All right, Kelly said white. You win, Kelly, because I have white in here, and that makes my life easier. So. Mm, white's almost out. I'm going to find another one. White. Brand new can. Amanda, where is she at? Because oh, I guess I could Google her Facebook. All right, come with me. Ooh, it's getting dark out. Let's go outside where my neighbors can stare at me some more. Okay. Tilt you up. By the way, make sure. I don't know if you can see. I have blue right there. I have red right there. That's what a power washer is for, right? Okay. All right, so. I'm gonna let this one dry and then we can glitter it so let's while this is drying let's go talk about painting and I'm going to build with you how I do my ombre and then we'll come back in here and finish this
have so many cups I've started. I might need stash group these. You know, okay, somewhere on our page, you need to Google or search for the D-Stash group. I have so many cups that just sit here. Like, seriously. Oh, can we talk real quick, real quick. I am in love with this color. This one right here, the camera does not do it justice. What it is, is Champagne Palace from Mr. Nullis. Okay, it is amazing, y'all. It's not white, it's like this champagne-y, it's got a hint of champagne to it. And it's so beautiful, like so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's my new favorite. But like I said, it's not completely white, but it's not like white opal. It's got a different hint to it. And then down here, I think it's, yeah, I guess, Once Upon a Time. It's amazing. It's my new favorite cup. This one I'm keeping. But, yeah, I need to go get this. Okay, so let's let that dry. Let's recap. Recap real quick. One, we're doing a retreat. We're doing a four-day retreat. Um, four-day retreat sometime this fall, okay? I need to know how many people are interested, and that way I know how big of a venue to book. And what it will include is at least, I'm... I'm I'm thinking eight cups and by then we'll have all of our new styles and maybe I can even get some of samples for just the people coming of like new ones that are going to come out for the holidays so y'all get a chance to work with it. Um, and so I need to start, I'm, I've been working on it. I've got Faux Rizzle, which is my new favorite epoxy people. Um, they're going to donate some epoxy for us. And I'm looking, um, Teresa Reynolds with, um, I forget your name every time. Happy Yappers. I don't know. Happy Yappers. She's a yapper. Teresa, where you at? Where? Yeah. She might be feeding the kids. Um, she's going to um, try to get some glitter for us. I'm obviously going to do your cups. Um, we're getting these silicone molds in on the truck Thursday. So we're going to have coasters. We're going to have mermaid tails. Um, so those will go obviously in your box. And all the glitter um, that's donated, we're going to put in the shakers that we're getting in Thursday as well. Um, so it's going to be so much fun. I'm so excited for it. Um, and we'll just do a, a weekend of cups. Um, it will be in Dallas. I'm going to try to get it right around the Dallas-Fort Worth um, airport. So anybody flying in, it's like a $2. There's Stacy. Happy Yappers Crafters. I was close. Um, uh, so it will be real close to the airport. So if anybody who's flying in um, would, would be real simple to get to the hotel slash um, convention. Um, what else? Um, so we're getting those. We're getting shakers. I know someone asked my glitter. So my glitter, um, I get Yaya's, Mr. Nola's, um, Glitter Glam's, um, Southern Bees and Bling. Um, I get it from I get it everywhere. I get it from a lot of different places. Um, I know Primal Graphics. They've got some pretty colors. Who else? Um, oh, Southern Eye Southern Eye Bling. They have one. Bright Eye Bling. Sorry, Bright Eye Bling. They have this one called Capri Island. It's, I think, it's like a, okay, woo, I'm spilling it. Don't let me spill it. Okay, y'all. But it's not like a, it's like a blended. It's not your normal chunky or fine. It's like a crushed. It has just um, like the flaky color. Um, how much is the retreat? I don't, I have to figure out how many people are going. Um, I'm thinking anywhere from 300 to 500, but that does not include your room because anybody who's local who wanted to commute and doesn't need a room, um, but that would pay for all your supplies. It would pay for the room um, to rent it out for the weekend. And I'm trying to get it to include all of our food. Um, like if we could do some type of like banquet dinner, if we could do um, maybe a continental um, a brunch and then we can do I don't know um, I don't know well I, I'm, I'm still working on it but I just need a head count so that I can get all my ducks in a row so that I know who all is coming how many to plan for um, that sort of thing and then 
What was the other thing? Oh, you made me think of something. Oh, we could do like a field trip. There's um, Join Us and uh, there's several other ones down in downtown Dallas. Maybe if we had enough local people, we could all carpool down there and do like a big giant shopping trip. Um, but I'm also going to try all the people, um, glitter suppliers, the, the epoxy people, um, I mean, acrylic blanks, anybody who wants to come and be a vendor. We could do a vendor, that way um, you could purchase anything that you found there. Um, after the live, actually, I take that back. I have it saved. It's supposed to post at 9 o'clock tonight in the group, um, Central Time. Um, it's going to be a poll saying where your level of interest is just so I can get a gauge um, of all of that. So let's go outside and woodwork. Sorry, a tour through my dark house so we can go to the garage. All right. Okay, if y'all didn't know, you will now. My favorite color is pink. Do you see the sparkles? Do you see the sparkles on my face? Okay. My favorite color is pink. Can you tell? Okay. I love pink. Um, brand of epoxy. So I used to be an avid pro marine girl. Loved it. I needed it for the heat. I switched to faux rizzle when they had the Memorial Day sale. Y'all, I will never go back. It is amazing. I love it. It's so easy to work with. There are, like, I was pro marine. I was like, oh, the micro bubbles. It's not a big deal. You can't really see them. No, you can. Because once I switch to faux rizzle, you don't see them. So, that. Faux rizzle. Now, I'm really far away. I know my Jeep. Don't you love it? You're local, so you might see me around, and I apologize. Um... I'm really far away. I can't see the comments at the moment, just so you know. Hopefully you guys can help answer each other. Um, my love of pink, Lowe's has pink two by fours, y'all. Pink two by fours. I should have bought more than one. I need to build a she shed out of pink two by fours. And they were cheaper than regular two by fours. So what I'm building is my drying rack. So like I showed you guys before, my PVC pipe, I attached with, um, ooh, hold on, that was like sticky for some reason. Let me use this one. My PVC pipe, I attached a male screw-on connector, okay? And the reason I did that is because when I want to keep it stable and don't want it to fall off, I screw it on, okay? It's not going anywhere. So to do this, to secure it, I did it in the bottom of my craft table. I do it in my drying rack, and this is gonna be my ombre stand. So when I screw it on here, I can take this outside, and it's a stable base, right? And I can work with my cup. I'm all about two hands, y'all. So I'm gonna show you how to make this, which is essentially a smaller version of this. And I think for the retreat, I'm gonna bring in depending on how many of you. I'm thinking I would bring in some of these, either already done or small enough that if you're traveling, maybe just a single so that you can throw it in your suitcase and take it home with you. Okay, trying to read. Oh my God, Jeeps. Mine's purple. Amanda, you've seen my Jeep. <laughs> I bring a male three-fourths, yeah. Male, so the that one on there is the male, this is the female, right? That one goes into that one. Little anatomy lesson. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build one of these tonight and I'm gonna show you how. So what I need to do is I mark off, y'all, Texans don't do well with humidity and it is humid. I am dying out here. And it's been two seconds. So I need three inches from the end. So I don't know if you can see. From the end, I'm gonna mark an X at three inches. That's gonna be my first hole. From there, I need, you can do six. I like seven just because I like the extra space. I don't want, uh, I'll do seven. So from there, I'm gonna mark it at 10. I'm gonna mark it at 17. I'm gonna mark it at 24. And this one, I'm only gonna make a four. That one has five. This one, I'm gonna make four. So once I'm at 24, 
then three inches is 27. So that's where I'm going to cut it. So volume down, it's gonna be loud for just a second. I'll give you a chance to volume it. Volume down, volume down. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. ready? Oh, well, it helps if it works. <laughs> it's not plugged in. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Clearly somebody kicked it. All right. actually a one and three eighths so what I have is this I don't know the technical term it cuts holes and things all right it's a one and three eighths I had to buy it um, sorry hold on one second I had to buy it separate it doesn't come in any of the kits that I've found so far but it will try to turn your wood so I always try to secure it. Actually, hold on. I'm gonna go this side. It's not in my way. Hopefully, it stays. going to do all of them. You guys will get the idea. So what I do from here, clean it up a little bit. You kneel on it. Yeah, you don't have to go all the way through. I do. Because the reason why is when I put my thing in there, I like to glue it from the bottom side as well. So that's why I always put mine in okay and then what I use is some all-purpose construction sorry I can get a little closer all-purpose construction caulk and I put it hold on there's some dry stuff all right Woo, it's coming out I just rub it all around, okay? And then rub that. And then I can stick it in my board. And rub it around there, okay? And then I like to rub it in there as well, so I get my Get some on my finger and I rub it all in there and then double check the top again. Okay, so that's how I make my board. And like I said, do a single one so that when you're painting, um, hold on one second, let me wipe this off my finger. Do a single one as well because um, that's what you're going to use when you do the ombre. I also use this for dirty pours. Um, I'm not a dirty pour kind of girl. I tried it a few times. Um, it didn't work out for me. It wasn't so great. So these are now my ombre boards. It even has sprinkles on it when I did a nice cream cup. So I'm going to 
It is getting dark outside. Mm, let me, I should have thought about this better. Let's see, can you guys see? Can you see okay? It's not so bad. Let me see what I can do with this. I don't like to do this on a table. It's just personal preference. I work better sitting down. So let me lower you to my level. Okay. Perfect. Let me roll you down. Okay, so here is how I paint my ombre. What you're gonna need is your stand, okay? And as you can see, mine's very dirty. The off spray is everywhere and cardstock. And today I'm going to do because it's getting dark I'm only gonna do one of them okay I was gonna do my coral in gold but because it's getting dark out I think I'm only gonna have time to do one so I'm gonna save that one for later and I'll do this one okay so laws of gravity anything you put on here is gonna fall downward so I want to do this cut this color first knowing it's gonna fall then I can do this color to cover it up. So I'm gonna do black first. Okay. And this is why my foot is always painted, right? Look at my shoe. It has paint all over it, my paint and shoes. Okay. And doesn't like that we're here give it just a quick second to dry you don't want it to dry too much right but you don't want too much on there that it's going to run and drip okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm using this sheet of paper to block it so that it's not getting up here. Now I want it to blend a little bit. Oh, let me get it shaken. Okay, so what I do is I curve this, like don't just leave it flat, kind of curve it with your fingers, right? And leave it where you can see just a little bit so that it blends and kind of keep the can as a downward so it's not going up. So you see like that. I know it's getting dark out here. I'm so sorry guys. If I have to do this again during the daylight, I will. Okay, now it's not perfectly straight. That's okay, because I'm gonna go back over this two times. So the first time I'm going to go with the black because again, it's going to fall. I don't want too much to fall though. Right? And this time I'm gonna go at an upward angle, right? So that I'm trying to hit everything going up and I'm not going down into it. So cover it up. Now, the closer you get, the more of a solid line you're gonna get. The further away you are, the more you're gonna get down here. I want a nice blend in between. And that's why I also aim for up here and work my way down so I can see my line as I'm going. Oh, too much, too much. So now I gotta go back around and meet that line. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a little bit more gray 
just because I know it's kind of dark and you can't see it, there are going to be some baby speckles down here. So my main focus is going to be down here, knowing that I'm going to leave some of that. So, ah, I did a black. I grabbed the wrong can, y'all. It's getting late. Okay, let me hmm, turn it on. Let me get a different piece of paper that was really wet. So see how that one did a really sharp line? And you might have to do it a couple times before you get the ombre you're looking for. But it covered right up, my mistake. All right, like I said, y'all, that's a beautiful, beautiful. I don't know if y'all can see. It's a beautiful ombre. It really is. <laughs> Thanks, Candace. Wrong color. <laughs> I'm going to, oh, like I said, it's kind of hard to see out here. I think I'm going to go a smidge more black. Okay, not black. Note to self. And like I said, I'm going to keep it re ooh, really close because I don't want too much drippage and I'm going to come from the upward. But I do want a little more blending so that's why I want to do it this way. I'm going to tilt it downward. All right, one more right here. I'm going to tilt this inward and I'm going to tilt this upward. Perfect. Y'all, that's pretty. We're going to have to go inside so I can show you. That's pretty. Okay. Let's go so I can show you. All right, y'all. Do we need white light instead of this yellow light? Yep, we need more light. Let's go get more light. Woo! And then we can work on... Sorry, dark house. shaking y'all around up there is my ombre so as you can see I have a little speckles now I probably would this is the only spot I see some like down very little down here so I think I I don't, I don't think it's that bad I like a little mixture of the color I don't like a perfectly straight line that's just my preference so there's the ombre Okay, so I couldn't do it without this. This is my lifesaver and the cardstock. Um, that's how I do my painted ombre. Um, here's one I did earlier with the blue and the red. Um, I had a blue and black. Where did my red and black go? I don't see the red and black, so I can't show you. I think it was outside. Um, let's talk real quick. Has anyone ever used this? So what this is, let me, hold on, let me fix my tripod. I shrunk you down and now I need you back up. of you have seen this before it's called 2k clear I think it was about $25 on Amazon there are warning labels all over it I know people who have used this because it's matte or even regular like if you have 1500 ones to do um, that they use this because it takes 10 minutes to dry and it's equivalent to epoxy so what they do is they spray it let it dry for 10 minutes spray it again put a decal whatever you have to do right but this one is a mat. Um, when you puncture it, so you, you see there's like a, a little tab. Once you puncture it and the chemicals mix inside, you only have 48 hours to use this whole can. So that can get kind of pricey. So that's why this is beneficial when you have a lot of cups to do. Um, that's why you see all of my ombre that I have laying around. I was going to do all of those in um, mat. Here is my matte black lowball. Um, I have.
have emailed the manufacturer of this company because like I said, you see the labels all over it about how dangerous it is, but it doesn't ever say anything about once it's dry. Just like epoxy, there's, a, there's warning labels all over it, but once it's dry, it's food safe. So I emailed the company, I think back on Friday, to ask them, is it safe before I promote them? So I'm not promoting them yet, but I'm interested in who has used this um, and any information they know about it being safe once it's dry. Now, I know most of these, well, at least in my house, we never use a cup to drink. We always use a straw. So I'm not worried so much about any lips touching it because it doesn't happen in our house. Um, but for anyone out there who's selling these, who, you know, drink from the cup, I don't know, I don't know how safe they are. So I really want to try this. And if we do find it safe, this would be a great thing to use at the conference. Um, I'll have to figure this out. So I'm interested. Anyone knows it. So let's do, let me, hold on one second. My kids and husband have stayed out long enough. So let's do, um, real quick, I'm just going to do, because we're short on time, I think. Um, I've been here long enough. I don't, I don't even know what time it is. Oh, wow. Yeah, almost two hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go use my Loctite spray. This is how I apply my fine glitters, okay? Um... It's the same stuff that's on the inside of a soda can, so it's safe. Here a few weeks back, someone was for it and someone was... Okay. Um, I'm hoping that the manufacturer emailed me back about the spray. But I'm going to go spray this. Um, I guess you can come with me. And then I'll glitter it. I won't do the chunky. The chunky, I always use epoxy method um, to get my, my chunky glitter to stick. Um, but this, I always... This is a lifesaver. Um, let's go outside. I have a barn door. My dogs ate the other door. And let's turn on the light. Ooh, it's tight. Okay. Turn you around. The reason why I want to use the chunky glitter and the epoxy method. Um, is because I see someone email messaging about it. I'm trying to read it. Sorry. Um, so they emailed the company and they said it's not made for cups. Okay. Um, use it at caution, I guess. Okay. So I'm going to woo clean this out before I spray everything but the cup. The only thing I don't like about these is they do get clogged nozzles. Okay. Okay, I'll show you how I glitter. Whoops, I dropped the cap. Okay, here's how I glitter. Let me put you, I'm so sorry for the bounciness. Please don't get like motion sickness on me. Here's what I use. It's my glitter bucket. Okay. Sorry, I was reading comments. Ugh. Come on, turn. There we go. Okay. So I matched a color that I found pretty close to the the HTV I use or the pattern I used. I just push it down in there when I'm getting the bottom. And on the top. Okay. And because I'm going to use the chunky on top, I'm just going to do one coat. 
I don't need it super covered. And for time purposes. Okay. Um, now. <sighs> yeah. Give me two seconds, y'all. I'm going to go spray another coat. Be right back. Overachiever. I need more coats. Okay, so I dumped it back in there. And um, Loctite probably. You could probably tip it upside down. I just, I'm not one of those girls, I guess. I have like five cans down there that all probably need cleaned out. All right, got all my excess off. Um, let me go clear coat it real quick. Um, the only Krylon I ever use is the clear Krylon. Not sure why. I don't use Rust-Oleum, but I do. Let me go clear coat it, be right back. Okay, so the only reason I'm not gonna do the whole epoxy, and I wanted to show you faux rizzle, but we gotta be at the warehouse, y'all. Pack y'all's orders. So I've got to wrap this up. Um, give me just a couple seconds to let this dry. Are there any questions? Um, we talked about a lot of different stuff today. So while this is drying, let's do Q&A. Um, we did just a quick recap. If I see questions come through, I'll answer them. Um, quick recap, we did embossing powder. Okay, I found, if I can find where I put it, I found my big embossing palette on Amazon and I will try to go through and post in a separate post all the links for everything I have. Um, I got the big embossing powder pad on um, Amazon. It's the only place I could find a big one that fits um, the big stamps. So we embossed on here. Um, the palm tree. We used the palm tree stamp and we used embossing powder and then we used our heat gun to melt it. Now that's on there. It's not going anywhere, right? It's on for good. Um, but what we would need to do now is still put another layer of epoxy. You can feel it on there. Um, to cover the good or like epoxy. Yeah, the, the Y2K or sorry, not Y2K, 2K clear is not meant for um, glittered cups. It's just to clear painted cups. Um, and the only reason I would ever use it would be the matte. I like the matte effect. Um, so we did that and I still need to go back and finish it where I swiped it, but we added embossing powder again. Um, we used embossing powder and a stamp to do the mermaid scales. We, I, I showed you guys where I did the paisley stamp um, to do this one. Now, the only reason I didn't put a base coat is because one, it's paint. And when you add the heat, the paint's going to melt. So if you wanted a, a base coat for this, you would have to put a layer of epoxy on before you stamped it, um, to get your dual colors there, um, where you get your glitter from. Teresa, I get my glitter from a bunch of places. So, these ones, if you want to know the colors, um, I did two mica powders, two mica powders that uh, a blue and an aqua. Those I think were just from Amazon. They're like little bottles from Amazon. Um, the gold, let me find the gold. The gold was beachy. Let me find it from Glitter Glams, beachy. The navy was the navy blue um, from Yaya's. And my new favorite, this chunky, is I think it's Tahitian. Yeah, 
the chunky Tahitian blue from Yaya's. So that's what I used on that. Um, I also used Mr. Nolas. Um, I really, 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 I think I blame my reallys. I love his champagne, the Champagne Palace. Um, I got a lot from there. Uh, I'm using Chunky Coral from Glitter Glams. I use Flamingo from Yaya's. Um, that's what's on the cup drying right now. Um, I used on this mermaid one, this one right here. It's got like this, it's black, it's like a multicolor, but there's a lot of blues, a lot of uh, purples, greens. The, the top purple is Fairy Godmother. It's an extra fine. It's like a powder. It's so, oh, it's awesome. And this is from Southern Bees and Bling. And then this is also her Rainstorm Blues. She sent me a couple, couple samples to try hers out. And so far, I love hers. I also used, oh, I wish I knew what color it was. I used this one. It's the first time I ever used her. It's, y'all, it's like baby powder. It's it, like it took one coat. This is like a, a hollow. It's super, super fine glitter. It's like I said, it's powder. It's so amazing. Um, I get a lot from Yaya's, Mr. Nola's, Glitter Glam, Southern Bees and Bling, um, Pri Primal Graphics. Um, I get a, I get wherever pretty glitter resides. Um, do you have Mason stainless steel jars with lids and straws? No. So this was a sample that my supplier sent me. And I put a poll out there asking y'all if you liked them and if you liked them with um, handles or no handles. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think most of you liked handles. But um, I decided that we were going to create our own mold. I even patented it. That were double wall vacuum sealing them so that they don't get the condensation on the outside. So those will come, which I want to put another poll out there. Um, before we finalize them all. We're hoping to get the, the double wall vacuum sealed ones in before the holidays so that y'all have time to make them um, for any gifts. Um, but my question, and I said I'll put a poll out there, uh, do you want stainless steel straws or do you want, um, this is a bad example, uh, do you want plastic straws? And plastic straws, they would come clear which I don't have any, of course. Oh, here. We have these packs, the eight inch packs of straws. We have those now, um, but we would have it come with a clear plastic straw, right? Okay, or stainless steel, which would you prefer? Now, remember stainless steel will increase the price a little bit just because it increases my price. Um, they're, I don't need, I couldn't even quote you. I, I don't buy stainless steel straws. So, um, but I do know the reason I didn't is because they cost more. Um, so I put that poll out there and see what you guys like. Um, what else? Let's see. I'm gonna check out your site tomorrow. Will you leave this video so you can watch the whole thing? Yes, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post it. Do you tape around your noodle inside? How do you keep, um, stick to no, 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 my, um, this one's just, this is a tricky cup because it's smaller here and bigger here, and I need it to be bigger, um, so it has to fit through the little baby hole. Um, let me show you another one. So this one is a pool noodle, but a pool noodle is too small, and the next size up pool noodle is too big, so what I do is I get shelf liner, and I use a rubber band. To secure the shelf liner and that way I can wrap more or less to make it any size I want to stay in there um, yeah I don't I don't put tape around my noodle it's just rubber bands um, and then I use different size pool noodles I was showing everybody earlier that um, do I have it out that I have those new pool noodles that Walmart has they they're different shapes, but there's one that's like a star, and it's bigger than than normal. Um, all right, any other questions? I'm gonna let's hope this is dry enough. Let's peel it off just to get a look at what we created. I'm going to use the epoxy method to get off um, to sorry apply the chunky glitter. Still a little wet. 
Um, we talked sublimation. I'll, I'll post um, all of my stuff sublimation, where I got it from, and that sort of thing. This is sublimation. Ah, I love it. I'm going to give it to my niece. What do you think? Yeah, I'm going to do the, kind of like this one, where I had the glitter real thick at the bottom, real thick at the top. I'm going to do that for this one. And then I'll have it coat a little bit. I'm using, it's kind of a, a transparent, it's pretty see-through, um, chunky coral. That was Glitter Glams. Um, and then Thursday, we get our container at 7 a.m. Central. Um, we should be unloading it by 9, and as soon as I can confirm that we have all of our silicone molds on um, and glitter shakers, hopefully straws too, um, as soon as I confirm that, I'm going to... Um, get those posted. So it was the coasters, there was uh, the square, the hexagon, and a circle. Excuse me, and they're all about four inches or so. And those are gonna come in a set, uh, I believe $7.99. Here's one I made with my, my leftover epoxy when I was making that cup. How cool is that? Um, and then I also have the mermaids coming, the big tail, the little tail. Y'all, I'm so in love with that. Like, that is blinging. Love it. When I get that chunky on, ooh, it's gonna be awesome. I'm excited. Okay. Let's put it on there. And I will epoxy it after y'all gone. I'll finish that one um, and get pictures for y'all. So, thank you guys for coming and playing with me. We, uh, we did this one on our own. I gotta check it out one more time. Look at that. That one turned out pretty awesome. So what I did was I glittered it with gunmetal, and I wasn't so I wasn't too sure how they would mix. But I did gunmetal, and then I found these at Hobby Lobby. They are wax metallic finish. They're like a paint, but they dry super fast. Okay, and I just use a very hard bristled brush. Um, and you need a mini mermaid tail? Okay, I'll see what I can do. Um, it, it'll take a few, a month or so before I can get it on a boat. How many is mini? Um, message, not mess, uh, email me. Email me info at steelmagnoliacompany.com um, for badge pools. Okay, so mini, 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 mini. So like an inch or less. I'll look. Oh, look, can I come and you teach me everything and I will take notes. Wendy, yes, I will come teach you everything. We're going to do a retreat, okay? So come and I will teach you everything. Um, yeah, about an inch. Okay, yes, Wendy, we're going to do a retreat. Um, it, it might be posted already. I had it set to post at 9 o'clock. Um, the interest level, like you're guaranteed going, you don't know, maybe, probably. Um, just so I know how big of a, of a space that we need to get. Um, we're gonna do a crafting retreat. It's gonna be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, hopefully Monday too. Um, you guys leave on Monday. And we'll do all kinds of stuff. You'll come with a big box of everything you need and we'll just spend the weekend being girls and crafting and teaching. If you're interested, if you have something really cool that you wanna teach that you are like a master at, please let me know and we can book you some time to teach everybody your awesomeness, okay? All right, guys, I gotta get off here. Um, hang at the warehouse with you. <laughs> hey, we, uh, we, at the end of the summer, my, my, my girl is leaving for college. So, end of the summer, I need a new employee. So, if anybody's moving to Dallas, or Amanda, who's already here in Dallas, just saying. All right, guys, um, I'm gonna wrap it up, get my kids to bed, and get up early to get your orders out to the warehouse. So, hope you had fun. I did, and we'll do this again soon. All right, guys, bye.